Oh, wow. Look at that. You gotta admit that for a smartphone, this looks pretty good, right? It would only be right if I show you this image in full screen right now. What's good astronomers? It's Daily Space Observations back with another video. And today I'm gonna teach you how to take quality pictures of Saturn with your smartphone. So yeah, as you might have guessed, this won't be just with my smartphone. I'm gonna use some extra equipment, but I promise you that this process is fairly simple. So without further ado, let's get to it. To capture Saturn, I'm going to be using my Celestron Nexstar 6SE paired with my iPhone XR. However, you can really use any telescope you want in this situation, computerized or not, and any size you have available. Yes, as you can see, there are people walking by because I am doing this in the backyard of my apartment building. Next, I'm going to use my Orion 1.25 inch diameter star diagonal in which I'm going to put a 3x Barlow lens and pair that with a 25mm Celestron Plossal eyepiece. And with that, I'm going to use my Gosky Universal cell phone adapter to connect my iPhone. And a little tip for this video, you won't want to have to film it for too long. Maybe between 30 and 60 seconds. As you can see, I have completed setting up my telescope and I did this before it darkened because my phone wouldn't be able to pick it up if it was too dark. So now all I have to do is wait until Saturn rises. So I'll see you then. Oh wow, look at that. You gotta admit that for a smartphone, this looks pretty good, right? I know you can't see any of the moons, but I wasn't expecting to since in the past when I've done this, I didn't see them. Yes, it's the opposition, but I don't think that's enough. But either way, I think this video looks amazing and I'm gonna run it through a process that's gonna make it look even better as a final picture. So let's get to it. After you got your video of Saturn, I'm next going to show you how to stack its frames and process it, which will turn it into a picture and also make it way better than how it looks now. And it's also going to look a lot sharper. So let's get started. First, what I'm going to do is use the software pip link will be in the description, by the way, to turn my video into a picture. And I'm going to show you how to do this right now. So I go on source files. It'll show you a little preview. You don't need to do anything about that, but what you will want to do is select the planetary option right here, because what that'll do is it'll make Saturn centered in the video as opposed to how it is on the side right now, which is what I want. And then, yeah, I'm going to keep it as an AVI. So then all I have to do is start processing and I just have to wait until that's done and then I'll get back to you for the next step. What you next need to do is open AutoStacker 3 and of course select the file. The video will be located in a folder named pip so unless you have a lot of these you should be able to spot it pretty easily so you click on the video which is also named after pip. And as you can see here, it doesn't look very nice. There's a lot of noise, it's very pixelated, it's sharpened horribly, but I promise that after this whole thing is done, it's gonna look a hundred times better. So you won't have to change any of the settings here unless yours is maybe preset to surface, which in that case, just change it to planet, obviously, and then press analyze, and I'll see you when this is done. The analyzing process shouldn't take very long, as you see, only 23 seconds for me. I'd say that's about the average length. And what you want to do next is find out how many frames of this video or what percentage of the frames you want to stack. And to do this, you simply look at this quality graph here and you try to find where on this graph the video quality dips the most. And as you can see here, it actually dips quite a bit 
during the beginning of the video so I'm gonna try 10% and since I want to see what happens I'll also do 25% so what that means is I'll get two images one is 10% of the frames in this video and the other is 25% then you need to place an AP grid I think for this 24 is good you may need to go bigger maybe small maybe smaller and then here it says 127 APs. I think you should aim around the 100 mark or maybe a couple hundred, that should be fine. And then the final thing I like to do personally is I have a sharpened version of the final picture come out aside it. And as, as I said, it's a sharpened version which could save you some time in the finishing touches. I personally like this and this helps me most of the time. However, you may not wanna do this but it's all up to you. So press stack and I'll see you when this is done and we'll move on to the final step. The final software you need to use for this process is Registack 6. And of course this for the final time starts with opening the file, go to wherever you're storing it. I think I'm gonna, so you should look at them first, but I'm gonna do the 25% just because it looks the same and I got more of the frame, so I'm gonna do this. And as you can see, as you can see, this already looks a lot better, it's a lot sharper and everything, but I'm gonna make this, but I'm gonna improve this even more. Just because I feel like it, I'll select full image because why not? And the first thing you wanna do is see, there's a lot of surrounding noise in the outside of Saturn. How you can fix this easily is go to histogram and then move this arrow or move the slider to the right and see this takes out a lot of that outside noise which is great and it also adds a bit more detail as we go so this looks good actually I think I'm gonna keep it like this so I'll press do all which saves it and so the next thing you want to do after that is go to RGB balance and press auto balance and see that and see that makes Saturn convert to its natural colors which I think looks better maybe you don't think so but it looks more natural which I like after this it's time to move on to the final step of Registack 6 the wavelets and as you can see there are six of them however I think you only need to use three and what these do is they can either increase or reduce the sharpness of your picture as well as the noise if you need to. So I'm gonna play with this slider one. See, it, al it already looks much sharper, so. Maybe a bit too sharp, you don't want too much noise, but if there is still, then you could always press denoise, which I think I might do. Then go to slider two, slider three, just just play with these until you think that you have the right thing. Uh, this looks maybe a bit too much, so I'm gonna stop it there. Maybe denoise it a bit. Uh, 15, yeah, that looks good actually, so do all. See, that looks pretty good, right? I think I'm gonna press this sharpen because yeah, that's a different thing. I'm gonna press that, maybe go down a bit. Denoise maybe a little, uh, yeah, that, that looks really good actually. I'm very proud of that. Now that that's done and you've been patiently sitting through this whole tutorial, it would only be right if I show you this image in full screen right now. Shout out to Shem, he makes beats. Shout out to Shem, he makes beats.
Thank you.